This here is an OG Xbox One, and um, it's a it's a bit disassembled right now because it does not work, hence why it's a part of the Fix or Flop playlist. We're gonna try to fix it. I'll show you the symptoms, what it's doing. It's actually a fairly common thing with these consoles, unfortunately. Uh, and if we can fix it, we will then, in a separate video, deep clean it because it's in desperate need of one of those. This thing has not been opened since it was bought, and you can tell. Now, I've got the front panel attached via ribbon cable. We need it to power the system on. I'm gonna show you what it does. Okay, so it's on now. The speaker's disconnected. And that's it. You hear a click after a few seconds, and the console powers back off. Now, I think I know what's wrong with this, and if it happens to work out, you'll see that in this video, and if you have an Xbox One that's exhibiting similar symptoms, maybe you can follow along uh, to fix yours. But if I, for whatever reason, cannot fix it, you'll still see that documented in this video, and the ultimate conclusion will be that this was one big flop instead of a fix, hence the playlist name. Now, it obviously doesn't make any sense to deep clean something that is terminally ill and will not work no matter what we do to it, which is why this console will remain very dirty throughout this video. If we can fix it, great, it'll be in a PC CDC video after this, even though this isn't technically a PC, but yeah, we can roll with it. Uh, but if we can't fix it, yeah, there's no sense in wasting uh, man hours to clean something that uh, will be junked at the end of the day. So I'm gonna give it my best shot. Let's see if we can fix it. Stay with me. This video is sponsored by Karma, which is an app and Chrome extension you can use to track prices of your favorite items and apply relevant coupon codes at checkout. Formerly ShopTagger, I've been using Karma to track the price of RAM, which if you recall from our previous collab, had been a bit all over the place. But thanks to Karma and their built-in price tracking feature, I've been able to lock in the best time to buy. And the automatic coupon finder is the icing on the cake, ensuring you're getting the very best deal from said retailer. You can create wish lists for any product you'd like and even set up a alerts for sudden price changes and discounts, locking in that peace of mind you've always wanted without wasting precious time. It's about smart shopping here. Their intuitive interface makes it easy to categorize and sort wish lists, and there's even a chance to earn solid cash back via PayPal for shopping at select retail partners. So be sure to click the link below for a smarter shopping experience on both your phone with the Karma app and on your PC with the Karma Chrome extension. So just to remind you again what it does when you power it on, I'm gonna get closer to it this time so you can hear uh, the click when it powers back off. You can see right away, if I push it, yep, power light is on. You can actually hear the optical drive spinning. And then you hear a clicking sound, and it's coming from somewhere under the CPU cooler. Now, interestingly enough, the CPU cooler itself does not spin upon first boot, and I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be with Xboxes. I, I would have assumed that this fan would have started spinning right away. So it's possible we have a dead CPU cooler, um, or well, APU cooler, but uh, yeah. We're gonna figure it out. And one of the first things we'll do here is disconnect the optical drive. Actually just uses standard SATA connections here. It's nothing that uh, a PC builder would be, you know, confused by. And uh, once it's disconnected, power disconnected, we'll just pull it up like so. Now you can see the board is fairly dirty, but I don't think that's our biggest concern at this moment. I don't see any blown SMDs, blown capacitors, anything like that around the board, at least on this side of it. Uh, we're gonna check the uh, side under the CPU cooler here in a second. We still need to disassemble a few more things. We're gonna disconnect the hard drive. I'm just gonna do it from the board side. And uh, if we can get this console to work at the end of it, I'll replace this drive with something much faster. Now I think we can pull the entire internal assembly. Yep, straight up. Now we're gonna disconnect the fan cable for the CPU cooler. We'll need to remove this board here. So just three additional Torx screws. Now there are a couple clips up front we need to remove. Pretty straightforward. Another post back here. And a few more to remove at the rear. These two up top, these two at the bottom right. And then uh, I already removed these four around the CPU cooler. And now we can remove the main board from this internal frame here. I'm gonna grab it by the CPU cooler. Be careful pulling this stuff out. Go straight up. There we go. And now we'll need something flat to pry off this X clamp. And I don't think that my little pry tool, so plastic one's gonna work. I think I'm gonna need a legit flathead screwdriver. Which kind of sucks because I, I really don't want to risk damaging any of these SMDs. You know what? It's actually not all that bad. Slide your flathead screwdriver in, just twist. And then there you go. We gotta say, all this, this is so gross. And at this point, I think we can flip the board back over and the CPU cooler should just slide right up. 
there we go. So it's pretty sad to see um, the state of this main board here, just really gross, disgusting, kind of rot down here. I don't see any corrosion, like, like S and D corrosion that would be detrimental to the, uh, the life, uh, lifespan of this. Uh, one cause of concern uh, would be the APU itself. You can see the, the kind of mirror-like finish there on top. That is pretty much bare. I don't see any thermal paste there. And if you look at the CPU cooler, pretty much the same story. Uh, bare metal there. I'm not sure if this is a nickel-plated copper or what. But um, it, it doesn't look like there's too much thermal paste over the APU itself which is a bit concerning. Uh, and I'm also concerned about the fan. I think the fan should be turning uh, right when the console turns on. Uh, so it's possible that the console itself is checking for the, the fan you know, turning. And if it's not noticing that the fan turns, it's turning itself off to kind of save itself from overheating potentially uh, in the long run. Uh, so we're going to repaste the APU and then we are going to remount the cooler. And I'm going to see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, or if the fan doesn't turn, uh, I'll replace the fan. This fan here looks like a pretty standard, maybe like 120 mil fan, uh, but worst case, I could kind of like, you know, Jimmy rake something onto here, uh, similar 120 mil size and uh, connect that to uh, this header here. This header is not a, a conventional fan header for a PC, but I do have an adapter uh, that I can use. The good news is the APU itself looks to be in good shape. I don't see um, any obvious signs that you know, it wouldn't be um, either mounted properly to the main board or, or maybe, you know, part of the die was lifted up when this uh, console was previously serviced. It doesn't look like it was ever actually disassembled. The warranty sticker on the side of the console was still intact when I received this. So um, I, I have no reason to believe that the APU itself uh, is bad. Um, so that's good news. You know, physically, physical inspection looks good. Uh, now that this die has been cleaned up, we're going to reapply a better thermal compound uh, and then we will resecure the cooler. We'll reconnect the peripherals just enough. We're not going to fully reassemble it, uh, but I'm going to also replace that fan. It doesn't really make sense to not replace it. Um, if it's not spinning, we'll go ahead and swap it out and uh, see if that fixes our issue. And there we go. Replace it with a Noctua fan and uh, I'll clean all this cable management up if the console ends up working as a result of what we've done here. Um, I'll take the Noctua fan back if we need to junk this. Now, the other thing, I swapped the uh, fan config out. So before, right, it was exhausting air out the top, uh, but in this config here, I'm actually gonna have the air blow down into the main board, and then it's gonna exhaust out the sides of the console instead. So a different flow path, I think this is actually I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a console engineer, but uh, I think this would actually be a bit better for the console overall, assuming that uh, nothing's obstructing the console from above. All right, and now it's time to <laughs> test this out again before we do anything else. Again, we don't want to waste our time here. If uh, this uh, rather simple fix doesn't actually fix the problem, then uh, yeah, we don't need to bother reassembling the entire thing. It would be a waste. So we're going to reconnect the power here. <sighs> nope, same issue as before. And the fan still didn't spin. I'm not sure if, again, if that's what I should be looking at here. I'm not sure if the fan spins right away. I don't recall on my old Xbox, but uh, I do know that shouldn't be shutting down that fast. Okay, more investigating to do. So the next thing I'll try is cleaning up the board, especially in the areas around the MOSFETs and the RAM. Uh, looking really rough. I don't think it's actual corrosion. It could be, it just looks like a lot of grime. It's possible that something was spilled in this console now that I've actually looked into it a bit more. Um, and on the rear, especially around the edges, which is where the liquid tends to accumulate on these things. Uh, if, if something has spilled on it, um, it's looking pretty rough. So I'm going to give it not necessarily the full PCDC treatment, but I'm going to clean this board up as best I can, try to make it look as brand new as possible. Uh, and if I see any serious corrosion, I'll try to resolder those joints and then we'll give it one more one more shot. I don't have a donor board here and, and that's part of the problem is I, I can't swap SMBs, I can't swap uh, caps, MOSFETs, things like that. So um, we will see if thoroughly cleaning the board fixes it. I have read on some forums that uh, folks have just taken literal hair dryers and they've just blasted hot air through these consoles for about two to three minutes 
and then all of a sudden the console will will stay on again. It won't immediately power off as like, like it was before. Um, so I'm thinking there, there's either a, a small short somewhere due to this corrosion. Maybe something got in here and it's shorting. But uh, if we clean it up and we, we notice something, I'll try to fix it. But uh, yeah, this is all I can do at this point. Uh, without a donor board, this is, this is pretty much it. So we'll clean it up. I'll see if I need to resolder anything and we'll go from there. And well, it looks like it's a lot worse than I thought. Um, I'm not even gonna bother putting this, the APU cooler back on. I don't think it's going to make a difference. Let me get the other board right here. Yeah, essentially what we've got is a board that I think was soaked with something. It almost looks like soda. Um, I thought a lot of this was just thick grime. Maybe this owner was a, a smoker or something and it just did a lot of dirt and tar and whatever else. Uh, on this board but after trying to clean it and I cleaned it as best I could um, I noticed a lot of first off corrosion there is actual corrosion on this main board which is unfortunate um, and there is quite a bit of stickiness on the board and that doesn't just pop up out of nowhere there usually is I can't get this stupid ribbon cable connected there's usually um an introduction of some substance that causes that to be sticky. So as I'm doing this, I'm preparing mentally for uh, for this to be a fail because it's, I mean, if this was in fact covered in liquid, which it sure does now that I've tried to clean it look like that was the case, um, then there are just, there are gonna be too many things on this board to, even if I resoldered I mean, I, and I could probably resolder most of the SMDs on here, but it, it would just take way too long. Um, my time is worth more than that to me, than a single video. I have other videos to make. I'm just gonna check quickly here. I wanna see, sometimes this button doesn't wanna work. Maybe because I'm wearing gloves. The APU heats up, but then, uh, then we lose it. I'm going to just place the cooler on top of the APU, connect that fan header. Yeah, let's give it another go. See what happens. No way. Why is the fan spinning now? It never spun. Is that on camera? Can you guys see that? Power's on. The fan spins. That's, uh, and then it cuts off. What wasn't happening before that is happening now to allow the fan to spin, but the console still only stays on for a, a couple of seconds. Let's count it. Zero, one, two, three. I have about three seconds that it's staying on. I'm not sure again if that's any, any longer than it was before, but we weren't getting the fan spinning prior to me cleaning this board. And this board isn't even spotless. And there's still plenty of corrosion nastiness on here that I can't get up with isopropyl and, and Q-tips. It's just not gonna happen. I was literally chiseling away copper around some of these uh, cutouts on the board. Um, it is that, it's just that, that nasty. It's oxidized to that extent. Um, and, and that of course, if left untreated, uh, can damage other SMDs, things that, that actually are vital to uh, the functioning of the console. So, man, I I, I had, I, I literally was ready. I didn't even do it that time. Why is it powering on its own? And anyway, I was ready to give up hope here. Um, I was ready to just call it quits. Now that that fan is spinning because we cleaned it. I mean, if, if just cleaning the board gives us that glimmer of hope, I'm, I'm inclined to continue now to see if I can clean other parts of the board that might be preventing this from fully posting. I don't know, let's give it one more shot. A few moments later. Well, it's a lost cause. I have taken my microscope to it. I should have done this to begin with when I, when I suspected there was some degree of corrosion here. You can see that some of these connectors, these pads as well, are just totally eaten through. I don't know if the pads are viable. I'd have to desolder these uh, SMBs and, and check, uh, but there are so many different 
devices, service mounted devices on here that are that are shot. If I really wanted to, I could probably buy another donor board. I could start swapping SMDs out, assuming my soldering skills are as, as good as they would need to be to fix some of these really, really small components. And you can see other parts of the board, including this section here, are not liquid damaged. It's very apparent. The contacts, the traces, the pads are all intact. And this is what I would expect it to look like elsewhere. Uh, but of course, closer toward the MOSFET's power delivery side of the board, which is the part you really don't want to get wet with anything. Um, yeah, it, it's obviously it's some sort of liquid damage. Uh, and, and if that's not the case, then again, maybe a lot of salt content in the air. This console was clearly not taken care of well despite its age. And because of that, it's pretty much unfixable without a ton of labor input. And that's where another big problem arises when it comes to cost, input labor, versus how much it costs to buy another entire console. You're gonna be spending a lot of money to fix this Whereas a, a, a full on brand new, so to speak, Xbox One console would only cost you maybe a couple hundred bucks, depending on where you live. If you're gonna spend more than that to fix a broken one, just toss it out and buy a new one. And that's pretty much the dilemma I've run into here. It doesn't make any more sense to spend more time on this because at the end of the day, if I really want this to work, I'll just buy another one. My time is worth more than the amount of labor input necessary to, to more than likely get this thing to work. Uh, so that's why I'm calling it. This is ultimately a flop, but I think we were able to determine at least what the cause of death was for this board, which was cool. If you guys enjoyed this kind of content, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. You can also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see fixed next. We do have a few viewer submissions from the area uh, that I'm going to take a look at. Uh, you've already seen the previous uh, fix or flop video where I, I couldn't ultimately fix the viewer system, but we were able to determine that the graphics card was at fault and he was able to uh, process a warranty return there. So that was really nice. Um, it's just um, something extra that I can do for folks who are more or less stuck with current, well not current, it's actually gonna be older hardware uh, because it's difficult to buy anything current. Graphics cards are so expensive. A console, same way. I mean, maybe you've been looking to build a PC and recently you've noticed prices skyrocketing, especially in the graphics card market and you've decided to stick with your console. Well, if your console looks like this, you're pretty much SOL. Uh, but if you have a really dirty console, maybe one that's just acting up a bit, maybe it's exhibiting similar symptoms, but you think there might be an easier fix associated with it, it's not a, a liquid damaged board, um, then yeah, it, it might be worth taking apart, trying to fix, assuming your warranty is already out the window because your console is too old. So with that, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.